Sam Smyers here. Today I want to talk about a tool that is new in Ableton Live 10 that can really help glue all of your drums together. This new tool is called the Drum Bus. This Drum Bus combines a range of commonly used drum processing tools into one plugin. If you enjoy this video, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future tutorial videos that I do. And it will also help other artists, musicians, music producers find videos like this a lot easier. So let's go ahead and see how we're gonna use this tool today. Here I have the drum bus plugin loaded on a group of drums. What I did is I bounced down some stems to one of my songs and I bounced down a drums group bus. So you could just group together a bunch of your individual drums and then put the drum bus on it as well. So the drum bus, if you just search drum bus, then it'll pop up and then you can drag and place this on your group of drums. So let's go ahead and go through some of the settings on the plugin. This first group of settings, we have the distortion modes. So you have soft clipping, medium clipping, and then hard clipping. Then you have this drive knob, which determines the amount of input you are sending through the distortion modes. Let's go ahead and take a listen. So those are the three distortion modes. Next is this trim level, so we can determine the amount of input that is going to be sent into the plugin. So I could turn down the trim if I want to turn down the input going into the plugin. And then I can turn on this compression button. And so basically the compressor is a fast attack, medium release, and then moderate ratio. I usually like a bit of a slower attack, so just test this out, try it out, see if it sounds good, but you might not find that this works for you. Over in this section is a crunch knob. This adds a bit of mid to high range distortion. And under the crunch knob is a damp knob, which removes unwanted high frequencies that can be introduced from adding this distortion. So that is a big difference just playing that drum track with the drum bus turned on and turned off. Under these two knobs, we have a transients knob. So basically, if you turn this knob to the left, then it will increase the attack, but decrease the sustain. If you turn it to the right, what happens is that it increases the attack again, but it also increases the sustain. So basically, when you turn it to the left, you are making the drums a lot tighter, but whenever you are increasing it to the right, you're making the drums a lot more punchy. So let's go ahead and take a listen to that. Let me go ahead and turn down some of this crunch. This transients knob is affecting the transients of frequencies above 100 hertz. For low end enhancement, we have this boom knob, and this boom adds some low end enhancement to your kick. Let's go ahead and check this out. And then you have this metering, which shows the amount of boom or bass that you're adding to your drums. We can also adjust the frequency at which the boom is occurring. And as we adjust this frequency, the notes 
in this little section here change, and these represent the nearest MIDI notes at which this frequency filter is hitting. So if I go to, let's say, 48.5, it'll say G, and then if I click on it, it will adjust it to be exactly at G. So the decay knob affects the decay rate of the low frequencies. If I turn this boom knob to 0%, then this decay is only going to be affecting the input after it has hit this distortion and the crunch, the decay of that low end. If I turn this boom to anything over 0%, then it's going to affect the decay of also that low end enhancement that the boom is adding. So there you heard, as I decreased the decay, that decay of the boom got a lot tighter. Let me reset this to 100%, and then I can also click this little headphone button. This will let me isolate that boom noise, and it's called the boom audition button. So let's go ahead and listen to the boom by itself. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And of course, as we get over to this section, we have the output level. So we can decrease the output level of the plugin. And then we can also run this plugin in parallel. So we could adjust the dry and wet ratio. If I want to run some kind of parallel saturation, distortion, or some boom, I can mix it in with the original signal. So now just because this is a drum bus plugin doesn't mean you just have to use it on a drum bus. You could also use it on some 808s, add some nice boom to your 808s, some drive, some of that mid-high crunch to your 808s. You could also test this on a master bus. So put this on your master and see if you can affect some of the transient information like the drums and the bass. So now if you wanted to process your drums similarly without this plugin, it would take probably at least five plugins to do what this one plugin is doing because you would have to use a soft clipping plugin, a compressor, an EQ, maybe another distortion for the mid-range, maybe a low-end enhancement plugin. So go ahead and give this plugin a try. Put it on your drums, put it on some bass, maybe put it on your master bus. See if it helps improve your sound. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and also subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future tutorial videos that I do and it will help other people find these videos and help them with their music production. So thank you very much, guys. I will see you next time.